Okay, okay thank you. So, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, the project Accelerate. The project Accelerate is dedicated to develop exascale uh, enabling technologies for engineering applications. And now I will give you uh, as, uh, an overview of the activities that are going on in the project. The project is been running for about uh, one year and a few months and uh, a lot of interesting stuff has happened. And then uh, I will give you through the main uh, activities that are uh, going on and then I will uh, describe the main roles of BSC within this project and some of our ongoing activities. So Accelerate uh, is, built, uh, is, is built from the, the need of uh, having uh, exascale enabling technologies for engineering. And this is because uh, now we will have a new exascale machines and we need codes that are able to use efficiently these machines because this is a, a demand that comes from the European competitiveness. And in fact, in, in Accelerate, uh, this, uh, this expertise is coming from the partners that have a strong background on engineering and HPC. So the, the whole movement of the Center of Excellence is, is coming from the development or the, the definition of uh, use cases that uh, represent uh, uh, challenges in the engineering community, in the broad sense of the engineering community. And from those uh, requirements, uh, some developments are, are taking place. So, in fact, uh, the, the project Accelerate is uh, composed by 13 partners. It's led by the Universitat of Stuttgart and HRLS. Uh, you hear Bastian uh, this morning. Bastian Koller is the coordinator of the project. And also, uh, it contains uh, several universities, uh, research centers, some uh, SMEs and some other companies related to the HPC uh, infrastructure. So from this uh, consortia uh, containing uh, 13 partners, uh, we uh, work with the definition of uh, six core codes. So these are the engineering codes that have been identified at the European uh, uh, scale that are representative of the standards uh, in terms of uh, HPC and in terms of uh, accuracy on engineering calculations. This can be uh, applied uh, and the Accelerate project uh, extends up to uh, four uh, application areas, including aerospace, automotive, energy, and safety applications. So from those uh, uh, application fields, uh, we have selected 11 uh, use cases that represents the challenges and the standards of the demand of the engineering community. So in fact, uh, Accelerate is all about engineering and the whole uh, view of engineering. So it goes uh, from pre-processing to simulation to post-processing and the complete engineering simulation workflow. So what we want and the aim of the project is to develop a exascale uh, enabling uh, workflows that are able to, 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 to run these uh, codes on the new machines and take the most of, the, of it. So in fact, if we go uh, deeper into, into this, at the end from these six uh, reference codes, we, have, uh, we would like to identify the bottlenecks, the limitations that uh, these codes have to use uh, these new machines and then uh, try to provide uh, solutions and try to develop demonstrator, demonstrators that can be uh, then used uh, by the industry uh, to uh, identify their needs. And then with these codes, we should be able uh, to provide solutions for them. So going a little bit more into what are the activities that are being done in Accelerate, for example, I have extracted uh, some success stories or some uh, uh, achievements that have been done uh, during the duration of the project. For instance, th for the code NEC 5000 uh, developed by KTH, which is a code that has uh, demonstrated uh, scalability uh, above uh, 500,000 MPIs. Now they are uh, working uh, to uh, incorporate or to port two accelerators. So this is uh, been uh, successfully uh, developed with uh, some kernels 
and is being tested for two uh, different uh, uh, versions of the code. So, in fact, for two different kernels. So, this is uh, developments include OpenACC, uh, so also and um, compare it with a full CUDA implementation. So the results are, uh, are very impressive and there is also a continuous activity dedicated to this. So in terms of Alia, uh, this is our code from BSC. I will explain a little bit more uh, in the second part of the presentation. But now with our, uh, our fully parallel simulation workflow, now we are able uh, to run uh, efficiently and uh, without pain, let's say, uh, simulations uh, in the order of a billion of cells and hundreds of thousands of cores. I will talk about this particular application case uh, later on. So in terms of ABVP, they have been at Surfax, they have been uh, looking at uh, uh, incorporating a dynamic uh, mesh refinement and they have demonstrated very good uh, scaling uh, with uh, this new feature in the code. They are also now uh, working on uh, porting to GPUs and some new interesting results have been also reported for the project very recently. So in terms of Phoenix, they've been uh, trying to demonstrate uh, the strong scalability of the code in uh, an engineering applications. And then they, f they obtain a very good, uh, almost linear scalability over 24,000 uh, cores. Those are uh, some examples of the activities that are uh, taking place on the technical side of Accelerat. However, there is much more activity going on on the back scene. So Accelerat uh, is, is, is meant to be a, a, um, a center of excellence to provide services for the engineering community. And this is uh, what I'm trying to represent on this uh, graph. So from the Accelerat uh, portal, uh, you can access some services uh, that are being inherently uh, developed uh, in the project. So from the expertise and the background of the different partners and some of the uh, activities that are being developed uh, in in, within the project, they have identified uh, some uh, uh, key um, services that include not only training and events, but also some consulting for the companies, uh, some, uh, some solutions uh, for particular problems of engineering, also some access to the, to the codes, some uh, good practices in terms of development or in terms of modeling and this kind of thing. So this is all uh, being uh, uh, developed uh, in parallel to the technical activities in Accelerate. All this information can be uh, uh, checked uh, from the website. So now if we go to uh, our role as BSC Center of Ex uh, um, Supercomputing Center in Accelerate, we've been uh, uh, coordinating the activities on HPC enabling technologies for Exascale. So this is a complete work package that is led uh, and coordinated by our group. So we have been also participating in, in the work package and activities related to the applications and also to the uh, development of uh, enhanced services for those applications. In fact, uh, what we are putting into Accelerate is, uh, is one of the six uh, core codes, uh, which is our code, Alia, and then uh, three use cases that are shown below. So uh, the three cases that, uh, that we are uh, considering in Accelerate include the fuel atom atomization and pollutant emissions in engines. Then uh, the second use case is uh, related to aerodynamics and the application of active flow control. And then the third case is a structural health monitoring uh, for aircraft uh, structures. So at the moment uh, in the project, we've been focused on the first two test cases and the structural health monitoring is being planned to start uh, for the last year of the project. So now I will give you an overview on the activities that we are doing for these two use cases. So in terms of fuel atomization and emissions, uh, I would like to give you an overview of what is uh, being uh, targeted in this, in this activity. Basically, when you have a, a liquid fuel uh, and then you want to, to get power out of this, uh, then you have to inject the liquid fuel into a system. You have to uh, uh, break the liquid uh, fuel into a small, uh, 
ligaments and a small, uh, a smaller uh, particles that is called primary breakup. Then these uh, particles or these droplets are then uh, broken into smaller and smaller droplets. And finally, uh, by a process of heat and mass transfer, they, uh, they uh, evaporate and finally they mix with the air and then the chemical reaction can take place and then combustion takes place. So this is a very complicated physical problem and then uh, that we are trying to solve with different methods. So for the primary breakup, we use uh, an Eulerian approach that uh, describes a fully uh, Eulerian description of the gas and the liquid phase. This is a very, uh, this is a quite expensive approach, but is very accurate and very uh, uh, pertinent to, uh, to understand and to characterize the dense uh, part of uh, the spray. Then uh, when we go into the dilute region after the primary breakup has taken place, then uh, we use um, Lagrangian method that is more suitable to describe the characteristics of the dilute region of the spray and the dispersed spray. So in this uh, Lagrangian approach, we, use, uh, we can develop a secondary breakup models and then evaporation models. Finally, for the gas phase, so when the fuel is uh, uh, evaporated and is in gas phase, we need to describe the combustion process. So all these uh, physical problems are being uh, come together when you want to model a, a, an engine, or let's say that uh, we are interested in the power output of an engine for a given application. So in this context, uh, we are planning to, uh, to study this process and to develop a technology for this process to understand and to characterize uh, alternative fuels for uh, transportation. In this case, we are considering for validation purposes the Engine Combustion Network, which is a, an association that uh, provides a reliable data uh, for, for validation of numerical simulations. So this is uh, one of the simulations that we have done of um, the atomization process of a liquid jet that is a representative of, uh, of an internal combustion engine. What you see is an isosurface of the liquid volume fraction, and then uh, the, the, you see how the, the liquid core enters into the domain, and after the existence of Hemingham Holt instabilities, the jet is broken into ligaments, and these ligaments uh, are uh, becoming smaller, and some um, small droplets are formed. So from this simulation, we have developed a methodology called the Eulerian Lagrangian Spray Atomization Model that allows to obtain a diameter, so let's say a particle a, a, or droplet diameters from the numerical simulations. As you can see here, this is a cut of the jet entering the domain. And what you see in color are uh, the corresponding uh, di southern mean diameter of the droplets that will be generated after the breakup of the jet. So our approach to solve this problem can be assumed to take place in two steps. In the first step, uh, we run an Eulerian simulation like the one that you see on the image. So we can get a fully des a description of the atomization process. From this information, we can uh, extract uh, statistics about the distribution of the droplet, the sizes of the droplets, and also the velocities of the droplets. So in a second case, uh, and then uh, what you see here is uh, an extraction of the region after the primary breakup, and then some uh, um, PDFs, uh, probability density functions, of the particle size distributions that we can use for the second step of the of the process. So, with an accelerator, what we would like is to apply the, uh, this methodology using uh, adaptive mesh refinement that will al allow us to 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 run simulations that are closer to realistic conditions with higher Weber numbers, with high uh, higher Reynolds numbers and then to characterize better uh, the, the mixing, the, the atomization and the mixing problem. So once these uh, statistics uh, are obtained, uh, then we extract this information about the particles and the injection system, and then we have applied this to one of the reference uh, cases of the engine combustion network. This is, uh, these are the conditions that I wrote on the middle column, which corresponds to a spray A of endodecane. This is a very uh, representative uh, configuration 
of a realistic uh, internal combustion engine, and these are the conditions that are being tested experimentally. Here on the middle column on the bottom, what you see is the penetration of liquid and vapor uh, for the experiments and for the simulations. We have obtained a very good agreement, and then we can uh, this encourages to the uh, the study of the of the combustion problem and then the pollutant emissions. So on the on the animations you see on the top the distribution of the fuel after the injection process, and then on the bottom the temperature uh, of the of the of the of the gas so what you see is an injection of the fuel in the, if you look at the bottom one and then after certain time there is in uh, an auto ignition of the flame this is a characteristic of um, of uh, engines where after a certain time is called auto ignition delay if the mixture uh, of fuel and air reaches certain conditions then uh, the flame cam can auto ignite and then uh, produce the power that uh, is required so in, in for this application, uh, now we are uh, looking into uh, include the uh, pollutant emissions model into this and try to push uh, uh, the limits of exascale in, in this type of uh, applications within Excelera. So some of the performance indicators that we have, we have been uh, testing uh, our code uh, for this type of problems, and then we obtain uh, some uh, scaling curves like the one here corresponding to an application involving a few hundred million cells in the order of 110 million cells, and we tested up to uh, 4,000 cores. Uh, with our fully parallel workflow. So we were able from, from, a, from a geometry provided for any manufacturer uh, very easily uh, to create a mesh and then to run this uh, uh, fully parallel. So the scaling curve uh, shows a relatively a good performance of the code under these conditions, but also uh, in collaboration uh, with the Center of Excellence Pope, uh, we identify some uh, bottlenecks that are related to some parts of the of the combustion process, so which is what I'm showing on the bottom image uh, there. This is a trace that uh, represents the, the workload of each of uh, some of the threads. And what you see here is that some of the threads are uh, requiring a, a lot of time, while other threads are uh, waiting. This is related to the computation of the chemical reactions that are very costly computationally. And now uh, with the uh, use of some node level performance optimization with the DLB uh, library from uh, computer science or BSE, we're able to, to improve, uh, we're trying to, to improve this, uh, this performance. So regarding the second application case, this is more related to aircraft hydrodynamics. And uh, in this, uh, we managed to run a large scale uh, simulation uh, for production. This is the largest simulation as far as I know, that we have run with our code uh, for production. For testing, we've been, been able to run uh, similar applications, but not for production. This corresponds to a full aircraft simulation using uh, LES, which is a high fidelity uh, simulation uh, method. In this case, we are representing the the stall conditions uh, that is very important to 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 avoid uh, accidents in aircrafts. So this uh, corresponds to a Reynolds number to 11 million and a Mach number of 0 0.2. In this uh, simulation has been run with uh, 96,000 uh, cores and two uh, billion cells uh, in, in in our uh, cluster in Mare Nostrum 4 during a period that uh, it was allowed to have these large scale simulations. At the moment, uh, we have generated a huge amount of data. I think it's more than 10 terabytes of data. And now we are trying to understand and to, to, to perform some analysis and statistics of the results. Uh, if we move towards uh, applications that have uh, more interest in the in the aeronautics sector, uh, we are uh, developing uh, simulation technologies uh, to 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 understand active flow control. Active flow control is a technique that will allow the aircraft to operate in a more safety mode in case that uh, it, it it enters into stall conditions. So in this case, the the the, the, the concept is based on including some uh, jets in some parts of the wing that are uh, shown on the right 
uh, by the yellow and red lines. So if we put some jet actuators there, and then when the aircraft is, is, is going to stall, and then when you have massive separated flow with these jets, uh, you are able uh, to control uh, the drag and the lift uh, of the aircraft, so you can improve the maneuverability of the aircraft and the safety uh, condition. So to perform these simulations, uh, we are using uh, a mesh of the order of uh, 200 million cells, and we routinely uh, run the simulations on 4,000 uh, cores. What first of all, as we as we do always, is uh, to we develop a, in a in a standard uh, simulation without any yet uh, actuators. Uh, some validation of the lift and the drag uh, coefficients, as you see on the image here. So this configuration corresponds to a landing. So when the, the aircraft is, uh, is approaching uh, the Earth, and then we don't have um, any nacelle or pylon or the engine. This is without the engine, and but it includes all the details of the wing, including the slat and the flap. So the results are in very good agreement, and this uh, motivates the study of a complex uh, configuration and more complex uh, scenarios. So in this he here, you see a. Uh, a uh, comparison of the numerical simulations with the experiments in which you can see the, 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 the position where the flow detaches from the wing. Uh, here on the left, this is the simulation, and then uh, by the red and the blue colors, you see the flow, the, the, the surfaces where the flow has detached uh, from, the, from the wing. And this is exactly what you see on the right uh, with the experiments, where they put some, some uh, uh, luminescence and then they, they, they they show this with, a, with a, some particular light. So what basically what we have been testing is uh, the application of uh, jet actuators that can go in different, with different angles uh, from, the, from the original uh, baseline condition. So what you see on the top left is the baseline, and then you see some string lines that go across the wing. And then you see uh, on the back of the wing some uh, recirculation region that comes from the wake of the of the flow passing through the wing. Then on the other uh, corresponds to the active flow control uh, points, and uh, phi represents the angle of the direction of the jet. So what we've been uh, been doing is uh, after the, the 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 position of the jet actuators, we've been trying to identify the influence of the angle between the flow and the jet. What we see is that the response of the flow through the wing respect to the angle of the actuator is, is, is rather different. So uh, this recirculation region changes in size and also in the dynamics and leads to very interesting results. Here is this table is, is quite busy, but I will try to, to, to explain it as, as much as I can. So in this case, what we have been testing is the, 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 the changes in drag and lift respect to the baseline condition in which you don't have any actuators. And what we have observed is that uh, for all the uh, active flow control configurations that we have tested, the drag is reduced by 5%. Reducing drag by 5% means the, uh, in the order of millions of uh, dollars spent on fuel for the aircraft, which with the COVID, I'm not sure how important this is anymore. But um, in fact, uh, when we go for, um, for the different configurations with the jet actuators, you, what you could see is that, the, that there are some differences and some impact on the angle of the jet respect to the flow that leads to different behavior in terms of lift and drag. What we see is that uh, when you have a 40 degrees angle, uh, you obtain uh, pretty much the, near the optimal uh, conditions uh, for the positions of the jet actuators. So th this is a still a, an ongoing uh, uh, research, and now we are trying to, to understand and to provide a more uh, uh, understanding on the effects of the actuator on the solution with machine learning, so big data analysis as well. So just to, to end, uh, 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 Accelerat is a project that contains a lot of activities, uh, technical and also for services, and BSC is mainly dedicated to the technical activities. So some additional uh, uh, 
work that we are doing is we are porting uh, our code uh, to CPU and GPU uh, architectures. We're doing some dynamic load balancing with adaptive merge refinement that we can use and benefit on all our applications. We are trying to develop some uh, shared memory storage uh, for multi-physics uh, properties that are required in combustion simulations. We are also working on uh, uh, developing efficient uh, uh, engineering workflows remotely, so you can run the simulation in one place, you can analyze the data in another place, and this is all being submitted from a different uh, place. So we are doing some in-situ analysis, some data analytics, testing on emerging technologies, and all that. So all these uh, activities will 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 come in the in the, in the accelerate uh, news uh, eventually so with that um, i'm i'm happy uh, to take any questions and uh, thank you very much for your attention danny thank you so much for your presentation it was very very interesting uh, all these uh, engineering applications of course devote all this interest and this uh, uh, computing power of course devoted to that if there are not uh, any any questions for Danny, I have I want to raise some ideas, some questions here because you you talk a lot about uh, engineering applications. Uh, I saw mainly devoted most of them to, for safety of the transport system, safety issues regarding the user and so on. But uh, you also mentioned about the polluting aspect of the machines, the polluting aspect of the motor or the transport system. So somehow. How do you balance this uh, safety uh, driver of your research or this polluting driver of the of the technology? What what would what do you think will will be more interesting in the future? Hopefully both. But but how do you think to balance this safety and polluting are, are always in the same side? What what do you think? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the question. I think it is quite interesting. In fact, uh, the energy consumption, maybe we can relate to, uh, to the pollutants, to the energy consumption and safety, is uh, something that always uh, comes uh, together, uh, but uh, it's very different depending on the scenario that you consider. For example, in, air, in the aircraft industry that I'm much more involved, safety is the priority because uh, if, your <laughs> if your aircraft stops, then you have a big problem. Uh, in the engine, in the in automotive uh, industry, um, of course, a small uh, uh, inefficiencies in your combustion systems uh, is not uh, should not put uh, the the system at risk. And uh, of course, the 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 so and and also this is quite important in terms of how much development technological developments each sector is able to take. So in the aircraft industry, uh, you see very small changes in terms of aircraft design, uh, uh, aero engine designs and technologies. And while in the aircraft, in, in the automotive industry, they are more willing to take a risk and, and more, uh, let's say, um, uh, configurations, no? um, more uh, uh, challenging configurations and, and this. So I think this is, comes together uh, for the aircraft, uh, there is a, a flight path uh, 2050 in which the directions towards reduction in the in the in the in the fuel consumption is expected, and there are targets uh, for um, there are targets uh, for uh, pollutants emissions. There are targets for fuel consumption, and uh, always maintaining the safety at the highest uh, point. And I think it's very similar in the automotive. Uh, industry in which uh, safety uh, is taken, uh, let's say, with a different uh, level effect. I'm not sure if I answer your question, but... Yes, sure, sure. Thank you so much for your views. Uh, 